What's going on guys? Spider here for Call of Duty World War II Zombies. This is Intel number two and uh, we're going to take a look at another dossier that was on the classified website. So we don't actually have to punch in our code this time. I don't think until another code is revealed will we actually have to enter another one in. We're going to go into the personnel files and we're going to be taking a look at Daniels. Let's zoom in on his picture here, Ronald Daniels. He's a private, 1st Infantry Division, 16th Infantry Regiment, which is important information we're going to see once we read more on his dossier. It's going to basically give us the, the breakdown of what's going to be happening in the campaign, I think. And I'm going to go back to the reveal stream for Call of Duty World War II with uh, Michael Condry and Glenn Schofield, and these are some of the comments that were made this game is based on one of the most monumental moments in human history, and we get to honor and respect that global sacrifice to honor the men and women who fought for freedom on all fronts on a global scale, said Condry. Uh, Schofield added, The story Call of Duty World War II follows a global and diverse cast, but for me, it honors my father, Ronald Red Daniels, and his squad, and not just what they went through from a global perspective, but what they went through personally. We like to tell a story within a story, and this is no different. At this time, I think it's uh, probably appropriate just to throw in the reveal for Call of Duty World War II, the trailer that was released a couple months ago. This day have set upon a mighty endeavor. Souls will be shaken with the violences of war in this hour of great sacrifice. We shall prevail. Get your head down and keep moving! We are all that separates the world from darkness. The enemy is ruthless. We cannot, we must not fail. Duty first. There is! Won't be enough for you! How many casualties? We executed the mission. Get me the fuck out of here! How many? We had orders! Lieutenant, tell them what we're all about. No mission too difficult. No sacrifice too great. Welcome to the bloody first. You're a long way from Texas, farm boy. Get access to the private beta. So taking a closer look inside the dossier, we've got some uh, pictures here. I'm assuming this is Ronald, a picture of Ronald and uh, possibly his uh, fiance, or it could be his father's pictures because uh, this, uh, this commendation here is for his father. And I'm going to read it to you guys. The president of the United States of America to all who shall see these presets greeting Know that reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Emmett Daniels, the United States Army 1st Infantry Division 28th Infantry Regiment, it is with pride and pleasure that I call to your attention the following commendation received from the commanding general. Please convey my admiration and commendation for the actions of Private Daniels in the Battle of Contigny. His gallantry in action resulted in the pushback of enemy forces from the town, saving the lives of many of our French allies. I would like to congratulate you personally and award you the Silver Star. Your wife and little boy have welcomed back a true Lion of Contigny. And if you read the writing underneath, this is uh, Ronald Daniels writing, Father was a war hero, big boots to fill. Just in case you didn't know, the Silver Star Medal, unofficially the Silver Star, is the United States military's third highest personal decoration for valor in combat. The Silver Star Medal is awarded primarily to members of the United States Armed Forces for gallantry in action against an enemy of the United States. Now, the Battle of Contigny, again, just to give you a little background information on uh, Ronald's dad, 
fought uh, May 20th to the 31st, 1918, and it was the first American battle and offensive of World War I. The U.S. 1st Division, the most experienced of the five American divisions then in France and in reserve for the French Army, near the village of Contigny, was selected for the attack. The objective of the attack was both to reduce a small salient made by the German army in the front lines, but also to instill confidence among the French and British allies in the ability of the inexperienced American Expeditionary Force, or AEF. I gotta say, I really do love how they fleshed all this stuff out. I mean, the backstory, just from this website alone, I mean, I can imagine once we actually get into the game what's uh, what we're gonna see. Okay, so let's uh, move on into the dossier. We have a letter written by Ronald Daniels, May 5th, 1944. We're getting ready to deploy soon. This will be my first time across the ocean. Heck, I've never really been out of Texas. I wonder if any place in Europe will look at all like home. Zussman says the cities will be more like Chicago, all urban. Been practicing a few words, the guys and I. Styles thinks he's got the best French accent. He's the only one that thinks that. We'll see when we get over there. This fight, this will be my chance to show everybody what I'm made of. And Styles, Ayala, Zussman, and I, we have each other's backs. So there will be no stopping us. It almost seems like this guy has a bit of a chip on his shoulder, or at least he, he thinks he has something to prove. Now, I don't know if that means he's going to be taking chances in the campaign. I guess we'll find out. But uh, this gives us a time reference for exactly what we're going to see in the campaign. We saw in the trailer, yeah, they're going to be storming the beaches of Normandy. And if you look at the date on the letter and compare it to, you know, October 1943 to June 1944, the 16th Infantry Regiment, they were in training in preparation for the Allied invasion of Europe. On June 1st, 1944, they departed their D camps in southwestern England and embarked on amphibious assault ships at the port of Weymouth. The long-awaited assault on Fortress Europe began in the early hours of June 644 as the 16th Infantry Regiment moved toward Omaha Beach. As landing craft dropped their ramps, men were killed and wounded as they attempted to get out of the boats. Others were hit as they struggled through the surf or tried to run across the sand, weighted down with waterlogged equipment. This reminds me of uh, Saving Private Ryan. But like I said, we saw exactly that in the beginning of that uh, the campaign trailer, the reveal trailer for Call of Duty World War II. And following the 16th Infantry, I mean, they were fighting in France. They were fighting uh, near Paris. They went to Belgium. They were driving the Germans back. I mean, the Germans were retreating and trying to consolidate, and they were driving them back from France into Belgium. And uh, in, in Belgium, the 1st Infantry Division ended up destroying six German divisions in August and early September of uh, 1944. They then pushed on from Mons. The regiment uh, pushed on with the big red one toward Aachen, Aachen, Germany, if that's how I pronounce it, just across the German frontier. For the next three months, the men of the 16th Infantry would experience some of the most grueling fighting of the war in the infamous Hürtgen Force near Aachen, Stolberg, and Hammock, Germany. After sustaining very heavy casualties from enemy artillery fire and the cold, dreary weather, the entire division was sent to a rest camp on December 12th, 1944. For the next month, they held defensive positions there. They conducted heavy patrolling uh, and engaged in a number of firefights with troops of the 1st SS Panzer and 3rd Fallschirmeiger Divisions. There you go. Uh, all of this was conducted in heavy snows during one of the coldest European winters on record. On January 15th, 1945, the Big Red One launched its part of the Allied counteroffensive to reduce the bulge. The Battle of the Bulge. There you go. We're definitely going to see that. So for seven weeks, these guys conducted numerous operations in Western Germany, culminating in the capture of Bonn on March 8th, 1945. They were then reassigned to the Third Army for its drive into Czechoslovakia. On April 28th, 1945, they arrived near Selb, Czechoslovakia, and began advancing east. For the next 10 days, the 16th Infantry pushed into that country, arriving near Falkenau by May 7th. At 0800 that day, a net call went out to the entire regiment to cease all forward movement. The war was over. But in 443 days of combat, the 16th Infantry had sustained 1,250 officers and men killed in combat. An additional 6,278 were wounded or missing in action. Its men had earned four medals of honor, 87 distinguished service crosses, and 1,926 silver stars additionally the regiment or its subordinate units was awarded five presidential unit citations and two distinguished 
unit citations from the United States. That's insane. That wow. So does any of this tie into World War II zombies? Well, probably not, but the time frame does. Um, as quoted from Sledgehammer Games, uh, I think during the reveal of Call of Duty World War II or shortly thereafter, they quote, Our third mode is an entirely new story and it's a pretty horrifying experience. You know, for Michael and I, so this is obviously um, Glenn Schofield talking, it's our first horror game in years and we're really excited about it. It's the story of the Third Reich's desperate attempt to create an army in the final stages of the war. So yes, German forces were getting pushed back into Germany they were, you know, they knew they were going to be defeated. And, uh, you know, it's this desperate attempt to create a new, quote unquote, undead army, right? Uh, during the final stages of the war. Okay, so last thing to check on this dossier, we've got a weapon. And I think we have a weapon for every dossier. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for a Thompson, but we've got the M1 Garand and, uh, you know, we haven't seen this thing, I think, since World at War. So I've got some footage here from Nocter on Toten, World at War. I know, guys, I know what you're thinking. Is the Thompson coming? I, I'm hoping so. They, they, they can't do World War II without a Thompson. But seriously, the M M1 Grand's not bad. I mean, it's not great for higher rounds, but, uh, you know, if you get it early on, it'll take down some zombies and couple with the grenade launcher. I mean, it can do some damage, right? Now, just as a note, the M1 Grand is a 30 caliber semi-automatic rifle that was a standard U.S. service rifle during World War II and the Korean War and also saw limited service during the Vietnam War. Most M1 rifles were issued to U.S. forces, though many hundreds of thousands were also provided as foreign aid to American allies. The Grand is still used by drill teams and military honor guards. It is also widely used by civilians for hunting target shooting and as a military collectible so there you go guys the m1 grand back in call of duty world war ii and world war ii zombies i'm assuming of course they're going to have uh pretty much all the weapons that are available in the campaign multiplayer hopefully are going to be available in zombies please give us weapon kits or something similar especially when you add new weapons come on sledgehammer games you got this Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for uh, this dossier. Daniels, we'll have more for you very, very soon. I'm Spider and I'm out.